Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the G-Shock Watcher channel. On today's episode, we're going to hit up the news. We're going to look at all of the interesting stories that are happening here in October. There are some cool watches that we want to go ahead and actually have a look at that are coming out. And I also want to take us some time to answer some questions from some of the people in the comments. Thanks for joining me today. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me today on this Sunday afternoon. I've got a cocktail and I've got some time and I wanted to be able to actually share some of the news that I've been reading this month on G-Shox. There's certainly some interesting things that are going on, some watches that are coming out about the Earth, Sea and Love series, which I'm always a big fan of. Funny enough, I don't think I really have any of their watches, but I do marvel at them a lot. I, I need to invest in one. But there's a couple of really interesting anniversary watches coming out. Um, there's also some collaborations coming out. So let's jump in and uh, take a look. Okay, so this first one is the new Charles Darwin Foundation series, which are two GAB 2100s. And uh, we know how much I enjoy the GAB 2100s. I own a lot of them. I brought them out here. Um, this was one of the first ones which I purchased, probably my first G-Shock, which I still haven't really touched or done anything to it. But since then, I've bought other ones which I've modified. This is one which I really need to go back and modify again. I'm not too happy with the actual uh, outcome of that one. But my one I'm most proudest of is taking this Caution Yellow and making it something uh, very, very different. There's a, a video I have of that one there. Um, but what we're seeing here is these new uh, Charles Darwin Foundation series. And they look really good. There's a red one with what looks like copper tone in uh, our markers on here. And it's a, it's a positive display, but it's a little bit different. It's not necessarily a normal sort of clear positive. It's almost like that copper from the hour hands is built into the display itself. Um, but nice color. And then we've got the white one with kind of a lighter copper, I think it is, or it's, yeah, it definitely looks like it's a little bit lighter, and that may be because of the white, but black on white, which, again, kind of Stormtrooper vibes that are coming through. But what's really cute about these particular watches is if you look at the indicator on this one here, we've got an iguana, which is pointing to the, uh, the different areas. And on this one here, we have a penguin. You can sort of just see the little beak, which is pointing as the uh, the actual indicator itself. So these are very cool watches. I'm going to have to keep an eye out on buy to see where these are, or even if I buy it first hand, because they are very nice kind of watch. the uh, The back plate is always something to to look at. Uh, let's see if we can actually find what the back plate looks like. Uh, going up and down. Up oh, there's the back plate. Uh, so Going back here, oops, sorry, <laughs> wrong window. There's the back plate. We've got the uh, Galapagos turtle. So you can see there the foundation, Charles Darwin. Bluetooth enabled as a GAB2100 should be. But very nice uh, watch, this Galapagos edition. I'm kind of torn. The red one and the black is very, very cool. The white one and the black is very cool. Both are very, very nice watches. Um, in terms of pricing, what are we looking at? Is there any indication of the pricing at this point in time? Uh, not as yet by the looks of things, uh, but certainly uh, some of these special editions will probably be a little bit more than uh, than what we'd normally see a GAB 2100 actually go for, but a very, very nice watch uh, all the same. Now, sticking to the whole nature thing, we've got the G-Shock Mudman GW9501KJ-8JR. Love the sea and the earth. This is the one, the series which I really love. And what's interesting, uh, the article here talks about the fact that we've seen many of these collaborations with this particular organization being in a lot of the range mans and things like that. But this is the uh, the first time uh, where we're moving from the Rangeman to the Mudman, which I think kind of makes sense because 
well, for one, you know my feelings about the range man. The range man has sort of gone off on its own thing. I don't know if it wants to be a range man anymore or if it wants to be a fitness watch, but the mud man still retains its sort of outdoor heavy duty thing. And if you're thinking about being out there in the environment and sort of knocking around, a mud man's definitely a watch. I mean, it's one of my favorite watches. This is one of my mud mans, uh, which I really, really love. This is the uh, mud master. But this particular uh, watch is one of the, the mud mans. And it's a really nice sort of combination of the green, the gold, the very clear digital interface. Um, it's a GW9500, uh, which, you know, if you look at it here, really stunning watch. That sort of camo green, the golds, the yellow, the black, a bit of bronze on the edging. I mean, this is a pretty watch, uh, certainly if you're looking at something for the outdoors. And of course, that stunning back plate, which the Love to See and Earth always is very, very known for. Um, this is a very cool watch. We've got the logo over the top. It's not necessarily as intrusive as what we've seen in the past. The, uh, the range man from Hong Kong Fire Service Department is certainly one which goes over the top of the, uh, the actual uh, time and it makes it a bit hard to go ahead and actually read, but this one doesn't necessarily look so bad. Uh, but, you know, I'm not sure if that's going to be an inhibitor. But this is a very, very uh, cool watch. If we were to go ahead and actually have a look at, um, let's check out Shockbase, just to, to see we get some details on the watch itself. Uh, so this is a GW9500. So GW9500. And let's just take the standard one as an indicator. So carbon core guard, uh, tough solar, multi-band six, uh, auto backlight. Is there Bluetooth? Doesn't, no, no Bluetooth on this particular watch. And of course, if we look back, jumping ahead, if we look back over here at the back plate, we don't see the Bluetooth logo on here, but certainly a very uh, tough watch. Uh, it looks great. Uh, if you really were going for something that symbolizes a bit of a love for the environment and a, a very hardcore watch at that point this is a really cool watch this is one i'm going to go look for myself um, if we go back to the uh, the pricing of this particular watch now bear in mind the standard watch if we look at it was about fifty-five thousand yen about 529 dollars sing uh, we know for a fact that some of these watches, when they start to become the collaborative timepieces, start to become a little bit more expensive. So if I look at this particular one, which I think is the Land Cruiser Mudman, this one went for $5.99. So not, not a huge amount of difference in terms of the, the price, but certainly as we start to look at this Earthwatch Mudman, I just think this is a really cool looking watch and it's something which I'm looking forward to. Hopefully, uh, I'll be able to sneak this one in. If not, I'll probably be in trouble. But very, very cool watch. Something that uh, looks like something we can actually enjoy. Okay, next up is the DW5600. We've got a couple of DW5600s which we're going to talk about. Um, I might jump around a bit here, but the first one is a Hello Kitty collaboration with Casio and G-Shock. Uh, very straightforward sort of black and gold, classic kind of look at all times, but with the big, bold Hello Kitty. So this is a 50th anniversary uh, with Casio uh, and Hello Kitty's getting in. Uh, of course, uh, a very famous brand is Hello Kitty and they've got the overlay on top. So you can see here, nice, clear, positive display on this particular watch. It's a DW5600. So I don't know if we're really gonna be able to get a tough solar out of this. No, there's no tough solar. But this particular watch, I mean, if you wanted something that was Hello Kitty and you were a bit of a fan, this is gonna be it. And you can sort of see on this particular watch, you've got the back plate, which has the whole uh, Hello Kitty thing there, 50th anniversary. 
I talk about back plates all the time. It's what you know. It's not what people are seeing, but it's kind of cute to be able to actually have that. It's got a nice box that goes with it. Um, so, you know, as a DW5600, these things aren't necessarily super expensive. So 18,700 yen. I'm trying to do my head on the calculations. Let's have a look here. Uh, 18,700 yen to uh, SGD. Singapore dollars, that's $160. If we go for USD, uh, well, not too much difference. Oh, sorry, that's not it. USD, I'm not sure why it doesn't want to do that properly. Let's try that. Interesting, it doesn't want to change. Okay, there we go. Uh, oh. One, six. Failing miserably here, about a hundred dollars US. So if Hello Kitty was one of your things, this might be one of those you want to go ahead and actually hunt down for. But you know, it's a cute watch. It's a, a little bit of fun. Now, in that same line of you know collaboration watches, there's also a Nissan GTR collaboration watch coming out as well, which is also in a DW5600. Uh, and so what you get there is the GTR watch. Now, this is not the first time they've done a GTR watch. Uh, obviously, Nissan is a very famous brand in Japan. I can tell you now, my kids have told me, Daddy, uh, if I am successful in the future, what sort of car would you like me to buy? I've always told them it's not a Ferrari. It's not a Porsche. It's a Nissan GTR. The uh, As they know, it's the Godzilla of cars, hand-built supercar i absolutely love the gtrs i would die to have a gtr um so now they have this particular gtr watch and okay it's a dw5600 but it's kind of cool and you can only get it at the nissan dealerships or the headquarters or the uh, boutique gallery at nissan crossing i've been there myself a few times that place is super cool they have lots of really cool either concept cars that are actually there, classic cars. It's one of my go-to locations I always go ahead and check out when I'm in Japan. So it's kind of nice to have this GTR watch here as well. So, you know, interesting. Two collaborations, a Hello Kitty watch and a Nissan GTR watch. Very, very cool. Okay, this next one is actually an interesting set of three stories which is coming together. Um, now, I hadn't heard about this GMC B2100. I have a few of these watches, as I've sort of said. Um, one of my first watches was the GAB2100, which was a black on black. I haven't touched it. It's kind of like a memorable first G-Shock watch. The thing I don't like about it negative display but the all black on black people have sort of said this is the classic watch to go ahead and actually get and since then i bought other ones which i've tried to go ahead and actually mod so this is one of my first experiences in trying to build out a uh, modified watch with a metal band and then the the ultimate i got to was a caution yellow which i did the full modification uh and rebuilt the entire watch which is kind of unique from that point of view now Going on to where we're at today, they are now releasing these GMC B2100. So we've gone from a GAB2100 to a GMC B2100. And the C, as far as I understand, stands for chronograph, right? So what you'll notice here when you look at this particular watch, and remember, take into account, let's take this one, which we can sort of go ahead and actually see. So this particular watch where you have the watch, but then you also have the small little digital inlet here. These GMC watches don't have any sort of digital element at all. They're all analog. They look really, really nice. Very, very cool. Full metal, full analog, analog chronograph series. Um, very nice sort of watches. So they share a similar infrastructure or structure, infrastructure, <laughs> Um, as uh, as the GAB 2100s, um, but still very, very looking. So it says here, 
due to full analog, the GMCB 2100 lacks a more precise stopwatch. Okay, so that's not too bad. I mean, depends how much you're, you're looking at it. It doesn't have the hand shift function that temporarily moves things back because, well, it doesn't have a digital display down there. Um, it still has Bluetooth and all those different things to set time. So it's still a, a pretty cool watch. So, you know, looking at this thing, it's a very classy sort of step up for the, the Casio to have a full analog version. And I can just imagine the, the modding community looking at taking this particular analog and doing some nice sort of bracelets around it because they'll get this very uh, exquisite sort of uh, analog sort of look with the, the dates in the, uh, in the corner, the bottom right hand corner there. Great looking watch, very, very cool. Now, what was interesting was there was also another version of the watch coming out, which is this one, which is the 50th anniversary zero to one limited series. Now there's a very, very nice version of this. So we can actually see there's a lot of black and gold in these particular watches. And of course it goes across the entire line of Casio watches. So Edifice, uh, Baby G, Casio, all those different things. But if we go and have a look at this, this one here is what we're looking at. This is the GMC B2100, which is coming out. And I think this is a very, very pretty watch. Uh, now you can't get a look here on the article, but if we go over here to Shockbase, this is the watch itself. Very, very nice, black and gold all the way through it, all analog, all metal. I would say this is probably one of the nicest looking watches that, that G-Shock has actually done. Um, that is personal preference, I guess, but certainly it's a very, very cool looking watch, a very elegant looking watch. It combines these nice sort of colors together, the black and the gold all in one. Uh, now, price-wise, we've got an indication, 869 pounds. So if we go over here, uh, let's have a look. So we've got 869 uh, pounds, two dollars. Let's just try that. Pound sterling. So $1,100 for this particular watch, but it's really nice. I mean, gosh, I could get in trouble for this one. 50th anniversary watch. Very, very nice. Uh, certainly something that's been, you know, I'm guessing a lot of people will like this. Now, Here's where the story gets really interesting. Casio, just recently, was hit by a ransomware attack. And so if we go over here to the next article, there was a cyber attack on the Casio network which resulted in system failure on G and G-Shock release delays, including the GMC B2100. So on October 8th, 2024, Cassier reported that the company's network was illegally accessed by a third party on October 5th, resulting in a system failure and inability to provide services. So Cassier then announced that on October 9th, it will postpone new G-Shock watch releases due to the hack. This includes the highly anticipated GMC B2100 AD-2A and GMC B2100D-1A. So I'm assuming that this is also the same thing for the 50th anniversary one, the black and gold as well. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how this, this actually impacts what's going on. So we can see here, they provide an update that the ransomware attack that might have led to the leaking of personal information, including employees, affiliates, and customers, but stated that credit card information was not leaked. So not a good situation anyway, uh, in terms of, of what's going on. As somebody who works in IT, any sort of ransomware attack is a, uh, a bad situation. Quite often we sort of talk about uh, this with customers and it's no longer what if, it's when it happens. Uh, but sad to see the impact on G-Shock in terms of releasing some of these watches. But I'm hoping that this can be resolved as quickly as possible so we can see watches like this GMC B2100ZE-1A. Spectacular looking watch for the 50th anniversary um, coming out at some time soon. That really is a uh, cool watch. 
Now, for this final story, uh, I've had to bring in a uh, international expert uh, to talk about BTS, and uh, she's a little bit shy, uh, but she's standing off to the side. Would you like to introduce yourself, Sarah? Hi, my name's Sarah. So Sarah's joining me for this particular article and wanted to prove to her that G-Shock watches were cool. So BTS member J-Hope leaves military service wearing a G-Shock Mudmaster GWG2000, which is the watch I actually wear as well, although his watch is a little bit different. So is your father kind of cool? Yes. I'm cool because I wear a, a watch which is worn by BTS, which I actually wore before BTS, I'm pretty sure. So maybe I'm an influencer. Maybe you're part of BTS. I'm, I'm an influencer of BTS. Uh, but he's come out recently from the, uh, the his military service, and you can see here his uh, a G-Shock Mudman. A little bit different to the one that I actually have. Mine has the rose gold. His is more the metallic one. But... You know, if anything was ever going to influence my daughter about how cool G-Shock watches actually are, BTS actually wears G-Shock watches. So is G-Shock cool? Yes. And BTS is cool? Yes. So by virtue of double cool, it means awesome cool? Yes. Which means your dad is cool? Yes. That wasn't the immediate answer I was looking for. But never mind. There you have it. BTS wears G-Shock watches, so it is super cool. So thank you so much to my guest reporter, Sarah. Thank you very much, and uh, go back and do your homework. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, and last thing I wanted to do uh, was to talk about some of the... We've gone through the news, uh, but I wanted to address some of the questions that were asked in the, uh, the videos previously more particularly around the, the Gravity Master uh, watch, uh, which is something I've had for a while. And there's obviously been a lot of people who have been upset about this particular watch. Uh, but there were some specific questions that people were asking about. Uh, and I wanted to answer some of those questions, which maybe helps them in terms of their, their purchasing decision. Um, there were two questions that were asked. One was on automatic time synchronization, and if it happens regularly or not. And the second one was, what is the point of one of these particular dials? So we want to jump in and address that. Now, I'm going to bring up a, uh, a feature here for the phone. <laughs> it has timed out. Let's try and actually bring this back. Let's see here. I'm going to close this off. And we are going to Okay. So we've got the uh, the watch there. Uh, a bit of technical errors there. Let's make sure we go ahead and actually connect this. So what I'm going to do here is hold down the C. This should give us the connection. Okay, there we go, we're connected. Now the first question that was actually asked during, uh, oh, sorry, on that YouTube video was, does this watch automatically synchronize its time when connected? Uh, and it does. Uh, it does, if I go down here to time synchronization, what we can actually see is that the automatic time synchronization actually happens on a regular schedule, which is every six hours. In fact, if I click through here and have a look at the automatic time synchronization, uh, it says here, automatically connect to your watch with your smartphone by Bluetooth to synchronize with the correct time. Uh, so it doesn't tell you exactly what time it is. If I turn this on and off, no, we'll leave it on. Uh, it will go ahead and actually do the synchronization of time every six hours. So every six hours, Perhaps it actually establishes a connection to do the synchronization, although I kind of wonder uh, how well this actually works. 6.30 p.m. In theory, if it's every six hours, there should have been a 12.30 a.m. synchronization, but doesn't seem to have happened. But there does seem to be some sort of synchronization which actually goes on. 
Now, the other thing that was asked for was what is the dial on the bottom left hand side that's actually used for. So uh, I'm going to go over here to the actual manual. And uh, so if we can sort of see, it's a bit tough, but what you'll sort of see here, if we can sort of show it, right, there's this, this particular dial in the middle, right? What does this dial actually do? And from the documentation, it indicates that the dial itself is a battery level indicator. Okay, so what it does is, if the battery level is high, we should be able to see very, very clearly the, the blue. If it's medium, you can see that sort of phase in. And if it's a low battery, it's not so clear. Uh, so looking at what I actually have here, it's a fairly clear sort of uh, indicator that the battery is highly charged from that point of view. And certainly, if I go back to the actual phone view here, what we can actually see is that the battery level is very, very high in this particular watch, which should be representative of what's happening on that dial there as well. So that's what's really addressing it. So time synchronization is there. The, uh, the indicator of the actual uh, battery is that dial's perspective. The other question that was there as well was about the flight log indicator. Um, there is a uh, flight log indicator. Let me see if I can try and go here. So under tutorial, flight log. So with the flight log, this actually gives you time and position information at time that can be easily stored in the app. Uh, so how to store, press the watch button to record the time. Simultaneous smartphones location data will be saved to create point data. So this flight log information utilizes the phone that you're using with the actual watch to create a flight log and that will actually map it together. Now. I haven't tried this, but I will go ahead and actually try it. Uh, I have a trip coming up to Bangkok for work. Um, so I will try and give this on a go and see how this actually works. So uh, we'll go from there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. A bit of a, uh, almost a ramble, but lots of news to go ahead and actually talk about. Lots of cool things. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. It's been fun to be able to look at some of the news and things that are going on. I hope you enjoy some of your watches and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Please, as always, like and subscribe. I enjoy being able to spend some time to sharing with you what's going on in the G-Shock world. Thank you very much.